So welcome, everybody. This is our second live Q&A session of the month of July. We do these twice a month to help you inside of our Kickstart Your Business challenge, where we could actually take a look at what you're experiencing through the five lessons you're going through in the KYB course and the task that you're submitting. And I want to give you feedback on these things that you're doing. So this is for anyone who's starting off and, and kickstarting your own business or, or jumpstarting your business you already have. You're going to have some questions. I am here in these sessions twice a month to answer those questions. So do me a favor. If you're watching this later on, you're not on the live, make sure you ask any questions below in the comments. So in the next two weeks, when we come live again, I'll have questions that I can go a little bit deeper on for you. If you're starting online business or you already have an online business and you have questions around uh, what to do next. Like what has you stuck? I'd love to hear it. All right. So our first David, uh, first David, yeah. our first question is coming in from David and David asks, so in this kickstart your business training and a couple of the first lessons, we talk about uh, building up your audience and basically getting free organic leads and what to do with those. So one of the questions from David is which group are we inviting people to? So if you guys know anything about my journey, um, I started my own uh, Facebook group about three years ago. We hit about 2,000 members in the first 30 days. It really took off. I made uh, six figures in affiliate income and core sales in the first two months of doing that, which was amazing. And I want to help others shortcut their path to their first million dollars. I know it sounds like a huge goal, but you can do this. And I did it without mentorship the hardest way possible. And I want to help people get those shortcuts. So um, when you're starting out, I would focus on one community. Growing one Facebook community alone is a lot of work. I would not have two Facebook groups um, until you have maybe a paid offer. And then you could have a second group for the people that are taking you up on your, your offers, your programs, your, your courses. So starting out, I think managing one community uh, is definitely the way to go, right? Chase two birds, you ain't gonna catch either, or rabbits, or whatever you want to be chasing. <laughs> I say don't chase either, but um, anyway, yeah. Start one community. Here's what I did when I first started my community. I I know a lot of people say, Doug, I don't want a Facebook group. It's a lot of work. I don't want to have to create content, do all these things, and I totally get that. There are easy ways to create a community that attracts the right people when positioned correctly. They're gonna find your group, join it, and if you position yourself with the right three questions to ask them when they join your group, you could grow your email list. And then you might just have content in there that's nurturing them into your front end offers, meaning like, you know, a challenge or um, maybe it's a webinar, uh, a workshop, a uh, course, whatever it might be. And the truth is you don't have to be going live every single day. You don't have to go, you have to go live at all if you don't want to. What I would have is a welcome video. So if you're watching this later on YouTube, I have a video that posted this week about my five things to do in your welcome video. That's going to help you set the right expectations, get people more engaged in your community and really create a highly engaged community of buyers. So go back and watch that if you're watching this later on YouTube. And um, so welcome video, you welcome them to the group. They're going to be getting your emails because of the three questions. The third one, they filled out their email and now they're on our email list. All right. So question number one, you want to ask them a um a discovery question, discover where they're at in their journey and how you could serve them best. Second question would be a research question. Find out what they're looking to learn about or what are they struggling with they could use a little bit more support in. And then third question, ask for their email and say, I'm gonna send you a free training over on that topic. Now in your group, if you have a welcome video and maybe a couple different lessons or trainings on the things that they said they want help on. And if, you, if, you're, if you're starting out brand new, get some feedback on what they're looking for help with Go and learn how you can help them solve that problem and then create those trainings in your guides tab in your group. And all we do, and I say we, because I, I hired someone to run this group for me a couple hours a day, a community manager. They welcome the people into the group, new members. They tag them in the welcome video and they tag them in the specific training that's going to help them out. And not only that, they're going to be getting emails directing them back to that training because I know how people are get very busy and they, they just forget about the groups they're joining. So we want to do things differently and set expectations and stand out among the sea of other Facebook groups. We do things different. And if you're watching this and you're not in my main group, come join my main group. Uh, link is below this, this, this video in the description. And you could actually come see exactly how we structure our group. If you're a group owner that's not getting a ton of engagement and not getting anyone to buy your offers from your group, Come see what we're doing. It's working really effectively. Okay. So uh, David, I hope that answers your first question. And I think the confusion comes because you're positioning, maybe doing a five-day challenge, which by the way, five-day challenges are amazing. And uh, I've done over 27 of them live now. And now we've got our evergreen kickstart your business five-day training that people could join anytime they want. 
Again, link below this video if you want to check that out. Now, my first half, uh, I would say, I think it was like 14 live challenges were all in my main group. So meaning I had one group, I did a free challenge in that community, and then I would sell my first course, my first course. And then if they bought that course, then I would have a paid members only community. Right. So now you can see why it's important to have someone take over that main group, that free group of yours to manage it for you. So you can focus on your clients and customers buying your course or your program or whatever you're selling. And you congregate them in a Facebook community. Uh, and that becomes like your your private coaching community or your private course community to help support them, just like we do here in the Kickstart Your Business Facebook group. Um, but for now, especially if you're doing free challenges, do it in your main group. You'll get a lot of excitement, a lot of engagement. And there's just something about those five days that really shorten your sales process. People get to show up, get some momentum. They get to learn about who you are, how you teach, how you help them. And more likely than not, they're ready to go and join your product, your course, your offer by the fifth day. Now, why we started doing paid challenges later on was because I did the same challenge 14 times in a row. And to be honest, we don't run ads at, at that time. We didn't, and we still currently don't, but we're going to soon. Um, so doing the same challenge to the same audience that was growing slowly, but surely, but a lot of people kept seeing the same thing. So I decided, you know what, we're going to do a, a paid challenge. So we charged $27. They joined a private community. We hosted that community for five days and we conducted that training. And then we invite them to our paid course, our paid programs, and we would archive that group. And then like months later, if I want to run that challenge again, I just go revive that group and schedule the times we're going live for five days. I already got the slides built. The funnel's already built. If you're watching this, you're not sure what a funnel is. It's basically a, web, a, a website landing page that gets them to sign up for your five-day event. All right. So if you want more information on challenges, hashtag challenge below. I'd love to send you some things that we're doing there. They work really, really well. All right. So um, David's next question is, how much is too little time to start a five-day challenge. And you're looking at uh, looking for 300 in a group to invite a challenge. Uh, so that seems like I want to invite to a non-challenge group first. Absolutely. Yep. So I, I, and I give or take, like I say 300 because I know with the right effort, you can grow your Facebook community to 300 members pretty quickly if you're doing the right things, following the daily seven that we teach here in the Kickstart Your Business training and connecting with other people likely to join your community. And I've seen people launch five-day challenges with much less, but I think 300 is a really comfortable number because, you know, law of averages, you'll probably get about 50 to 100 of them to sign up to your challenge. And you'll probably get about 90, 80, 90% of them starting your challenge. And depending on what you do in your challenge, you should be able to get at least half of them to complete it. Uh, we do fun things like contests and scholarship drawings and things like that in our challenges that really get people to start and finish. Uh, before we were doing free challenges without these things, we would get maybe 10% of the people to start the challenge and finish it. So if we had 100 signups for our five-day training, we might have 10 people still with us in the last day. I'm not doing this thing to only have 10% people complete. I want 80, 90% people to complete it. So um, we could teach you some fun things around challenges and what to do in them to increase engagement, show up rates and conversions ultimately for your paid products. David, any questions? You could feel free to unmute. And if you want me to clarify or go deeper on any of that, I'd love to, to keep going on that if you need any help. So I've had a group for a couple of years. I never did anything with anything. There's 11 people in there, but <laughs> it's, uh, and it's just got a, plain photo, virtual entrepreneur secrets is what I called it, or shortcuts, one of the two. Um, and so with that being said, with it already being there, what about replacing the cover photo with a challenge photo to kind of have that in there? Just kind of keep it uh, updated as time goes on. Does that sound like something that's um, yeah. Reasonable. Fantastic question. Absolutely. So you guys will notice, um, let me share my Facebook community real quick. This is a great question, David. Um, I use that essentially free real estate for my profile and my Facebook community to promote different events. So right now we don't have any live events going on at the moment. So we just have a, a typical cover photo for our Facebook group. So when people find our group, content creators, community, monetize your passion, you know, they'll see this photo and like, wow, Doug does live training every week. That's awesome. Um, they want to join. They could join here and they click here to start, which brings them to our welcome video and some of our 
our first things that we want them to watch. Um, so occasionally what you'll see us do with that cover space is, and I can't go back and look at past ones, unfortunately, but you'll see me use this space for, hey, um, we have the kickstart your business five day training starting on you know July, whatever it is, and then our dates, click here to join. So some examples of this, if I show you my profile, because I do this on my profile as well as our community, so what you can see is you can go back and look at all my cover photos of all time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, this was a free training that I promoted showcasing when I started three and a half years ago, how I started out negative in the bank and ended up making 56 grand in that first 30 days of launching that community and what I did step-by-step. Step. So people really wanted to see that. So I did a live training there. Um, and then you'll see, of course, I go back to my normal cover photo in between events. So this was our first time doing the Kickstart Your Business 5-Day Challenge live back in May, which is now an evergreen challenge that you could join at any time as you guys know you're in it. Um, and what I love about the live, uh, I'm sorry, taking it live and repurposing as a, a, a evergreen training, meaning people could watch it on demand anytime 24-7. So if again, if you're watching this video below this in the description on YouTube, you could actually go in and join this challenge. We'll welcome you. It's five lessons, five tasks that you complete. We do two of these Q and A sessions a month and we have a live scholarship drawing once a month. That's really fun. So that was our first time ever taking a live challenge and making it evergreen. And here's the, the positive thing about evergreen. Number one, you could join at any time. You could go through it at your own pace. In the past, if we're only doing this, you know, let's say May 2nd to the 6th, people miss it. They have to wait a whole couple of months until I do another live one or um, worse yet, they join midweek and they get behind and they don't do the work. So, and we still have the live component of it. Like we're live today on Q and A. We do two Q and A sessions, obviously, and then the, the monthly coaching call. So I love that. So I think that's a great um, advice for anyone here doing a live challenge, do it a few times until you get your conversions up, see what's working best and then evergreen it. I think that's really good. A couple more examples of uh, some things we've done in the past, right? I've done live workshops. Um, we did another five day challenge on sales back in February. So again, absolutely use your cover space. Here's a, another five day challenge we did on group growth back in December. So yeah, use this space in your group as like free billboard real estate, David. I think that's uh, absolutely something you should do. And then what you yeah. do is in the description, link the yeah. sign up link to that. Yeah. yeah. So then with that in mind, I mean, I've, uh, I've had some decent success with some other stuff, but no, nothing really to speak of or even done. I mean, kind of just not really got anywhere doing stuff online. So how would you position some of the, some of that to, to translate that to, to kind of like where, I mean, tell me what, I mean, how the heck did you go and what was your positioning whenever you were like, you know, <laughs> yeah. dead broke, dude. <laughs> I'll tell you straight up. Uh, it's a great, and you could go back and watch that training. I think it's still in my main group. It's pinned at the top. Uh, it's one of the most popular trainings we get because I know what it's like. I quit my restaurant job, right? And then two months later, I had some clients. I was doing you know, some website work for locally and they were signing up to software that I was getting recurring commissions from every month, which I loved. But what I didn't love was chasing checks. So yep. after chasing checks through the holidays, you know how it goes, calls through the holidays. It was January. I just... Got through the holidays barely. I don't think I was able to get gifts because I went negative in the bank in January. And I'm like, I have to go back and ask for my waiter job back. I don't want to do that. I know they want me to come back, but I just like dog between his uh, tail between his legs going back. That's not me. Yeah. So, so anyway, against the wall. I, yeah. yeah. I think it was really like the pressure of that and like yeah. knowing I had no choice but to go forward. And I was not an expert. You know, I knew a little bit about what I was doing with, I wasn't a website builder. I don't know code. Like I was just using click funnels to build web pages and signing up to the tool. And I said, I love that affiliate commission I'm making every month. How do I get to a hundred people signing up to click funnels where I could win this dream car award right here and they could pay for my car every month. And I was making like five figures a month, passive income with those hundred signups. And I was able to do that within uh, 66 days of launching this free community. And I was not an expert. So here's what I did. Um, I went live. I kind of documented my whole journey. I'm like, hey guys, I'm here. I'm negative in the bank. I've got a six-figure student loan debt. My goal is the dream car award. I've got about, at the time, I was like eight signups for ClickFunnels because the clients I was helping with that software. And I'm like, I'm going to go to 100. Here's my plan of action. Okay. And, That's great. I, and then basically what I did was just, I, I documented my learning experience. So I wasn't trying to teach anything. 
I was like, Hey, you guys, I'm reading this book. You guys can see the books behind me, right? These three amazing books. If you don't have them, check them out. Russell Brunson's.com secrets, expert secrets, traffic secrets. And I went through the one funnel away challenge that they were hosting. It's a 30 day training where they give you a, an hour, sometimes two hour training every day. It was a lot to consume. And then I would um, implement the action step every day that they taught us. And then I thought to myself, you know, I would just go live in my main group teaching what I just learned and how I'm implementing that action step into my business. And what I found was because I was signing people up to that challenge and making commissions and they would end up buying click funnels and sticking with it. I thought to myself, how can I enhance the experience? How can I actually get them to the result and the finish line of finishing that 30 days? Because it is tough. Anyone knows if you're watching an hour a day, trying to do a task a day for 30 days, that's tough. So instead of trying to teach and be the expert, I was like, hey, guys, I just learned this awesome thing today. Um, I Instead of teaching it in the hour that they took, I said, here's it in 15 minutes. I'm going to summarize what I learned. And I'm going to show you the step that I actually implemented it into my business. And then I'm going to show you what I would do if I were you. And you could walk away from this in 15 minutes to have that action step. So really, it's like finding the right people that you could learn from, document, and share. Um, and same thing with my, fruit, my first course, 30 days later, I in March, I launched a course. Um, I sold it for uh, around $700. I think it was $797. And I got 44 people to buy it. That course, number one, wasn't built. Um, I had an outline of what I was going to be teaching, and I didn't even teach more than half of it. So what did I do? I found experts on the topic of ClickFunnels because I realized like the biggest problem, again, like what's the biggest problem in the thing that uh, people are having when they buy click funnels? Well, they're not sure how to start a business using this tool. So I found five ways, right? Number one is build out websites and funnels for, as a designer, you can make really good money doing it. You can start a local lead, ge uh, lead generation agency for local restaurants and businesses. You can uh, create a course and host your course on ClickFunnels. You can go ahead and uh, sell e-commerce products. And lastly, you could be an affiliate, which was my favorite one. I was an affiliate marketer for ClickFunnels. And then I started making my own courses and products as I learned. And with my first course, I had an outline. I said, hey, who wants to join me for six weeks? Here's what I'm going to teach you on week one, week two, three, four, five, six. Week one was taught by Catherine Jones and CF Design School. She taught funnel design. Week two was taught by uh, Jeff Miller, who runs an agency, very successful agency. Week three was taught by uh, Austin Dixon with Info Products and Creating Online Courses. Week four was taught by Peter Pru and Sin Meadows about e-commerce. They're the experts in that space. And then I taught uh, the fifth way, which is affiliate marketing. And then the sixth week was just traffic strategies on what I would do next, help them choose the right path and go there. So um, there's a lot of things you could do if you're not the expert. Number one is identify the audience you want to serve. Number two is find the problem that you see that they have. And then number three, enhance that experience and solve that problem the way they want it solved. Even if it's not you doing all the work, who could you connect with? Like if you guys wanted me to reach, reach out to me and say, Doug, I'd love you to come do a training for my people in my new course. I would say yes. And at the time, I didn't really know these seven figure earners that I asked to come teach my course. They had no knowledge of me. I was brand new, no experience, but entrepreneurs, especially in our space, want to help other entrepreneurs. So the worst that's going to happen is you're going to get a no, or, you know, I can't do it that date. I could do it this date. So I say, just reach out and put yourself out there because I think most people want to give back and contribute. So um, hopefully that's helpful, uh, David, about like where you're at, just document the journey, read a book, summarize the chapter and present on it. Give credit where credit's due, of course, but like, Hey, here's what I learned. Here's what I'm doing. And I think people really appreciate that instead of trying to pretend to be an expert, right? Yeah, cool. Eventually you'll become the expert. So one, one last question, I'll let, yeah. let, if you don't mind. And um, whenever you were going through the 30 day challenge and, and implementing what you were learning, what were you selling? Um, what was I selling? I was selling ClickFunnels. So ClickFunnels, if you guys don't know, and you guys are watching this, so most of you guys in this community know, it's a online platform that you can host and build easy to build websites and funnel pages, which a funnel is basically like an opt-in. You see people give out like a free PDF and they put their name and email and button there. And then the thank you page comes up on the next page and then sends you an email. That is essentially what a sales funnel is where you could sell products, services, courses. Um, and I know, you know that I'm just explaining for anyone watching. Sure, sure, sure. But, Thanks. Uh, the one funnel away challenge was a challenge that came out still. You could buy it to this day. It's an amazing 30 day program. 
And I was just affiliating for that. They were paying at the time $100 per person that you bring through that training. And then if someone bought ClickFunnels on week three, where they make that invitation to the software, you get a recurring commission every month that they pay for that subscription. So that's what I was selling. I was just selling that affiliate product in ClickFunnels to build up my monthly recurring revenue. So the, you were um, selling the challenge in Click, ClickFunnels? Yeah. So it was not my product. I was just okay. an affiliate. Oh, that's that's perfectly it. That's yeah. what I, know. Yeah. I, I knew that answer. It just wasn't clicking for whatever reason. Thanks, yeah. Really appreciate it. A, a lot of people get stuck, David, because they want to go create their own course or their own program. And that could be super overwhelming when you're starting out. And I think anyone can do that. Everyone has knowledge that someone's willing to get the shortcut to, right? But I think stepping up and knowing that about yourself and believing in yourself is the hardest part for most people. When you, when we know that that's true. Um, it takes some experience and doing the, doing the actions that bring you the belief. And when you get the belief, you'll get the results and then you can help others get the results. So for me, um, I just found, I, you guys don't, probably don't know this. I spent eight years online, part-time working in restaurants and sales jobs, coming home at midnight to try selling something. My biggest problem was I was just selling products that sounded cool. Like I sold oxygen for energy, which is literally canistered energy to like athletes. And I thought it was cool. I'm like, but I wasn't really passionate about any of the products I was trying. I was just trying to make money to pay off my student loan debt. When I finally found a, a, a group of people I wanted to help, which were entrepreneurs that were struggling and found an amazing tool that I could relate to, that was an alignment to me that had good earning potential and that was going to be around long-term. And I stopped doing everything else. And I focused on that one product is that that's what took me from like where I was in a bad situation to making my first six figures online. So if you were on the fence about trying to figure out what to create your own products or services around, start with finding something online, um, like a tool or resource. Maybe it's just Amazon products, right? Maybe you're, uh, you're into all the tech and equipment and things like that. And you could start doing videos on what you do to set these things up. Um, I just started doing tutorials on ClickFunnels. If you guys look at my YouTube channel, like two years ago, I started just doing tutorials on that product, got me some affiliate sales and I stopped um, mostly to go focus on Facebook and build my communities. But we're back. We just started publishing last week and we've got a few videos coming out every week on YouTube. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, I would say start by documenting the journey. And that's what people really want to see. I think people just want to look and see where you're at now where you're saying you're going and watch you achieve that. So they feel inspired to do the same. So um, I would, I would definitely start there, David. That'd be awesome to see. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for your questions. And uh, we'll move on to the next questions, which is from Renee. Thanks Renee for being here. And again, if anyone else has questions, make sure you're dropping them in the comments below. If we can't get them to this in the session, definitely in two weeks when we go live again, we'll have your questions answered and I'll have a, a, a queue of those ready for you. So Renee says, with your Ascension offer, how much is too much? I remember in the training, you used an example of a masterclass. So should we aim for that one and a half to three hour time frame? So by an Ascension offer, right? I call it the three types of offers. You have your value offer. Um, for when I started my community, I didn't want to just go sell people. To this day, I still don't just love like trying to sell anyone who joins my community. I want to find out where are you stuck? Can I help you? Can you help me? Can we partner? What's our relationship going to look like? If I can help you, I'm going to find out where you're stuck and send you some free resources and trainings and courses that we have. And that's what we do. And I call that a value offer, right? Lead with value. And you're, you're never, ever selling anybody. You're inviting them into the next step to go deeper and solve their next problem. So value offer, right? Now you're talking about the Ascension offer. And like, if they love your free course or your PDF or whatever your lead magnet is, and they're like, Doug, I want to go deeper. Renee, I want to go deeper on this. What can you invite them to? I think a lot of people start thinking as a paid product, they want to go build this extensive online course or 12 month coaching program. And I say, showcase your expertise or what you want to teach in an hour or two, or it could be three, depends on you know what you want to do. And typically, um, before I started doing courses, I would just do a masterclass. I found it really easy to say, hey, I really want to teach on this topic. I love like content creation. Who here wants to learn how I take one video every week and repurpose it into uh, 50 plus pieces of content every week? I'm doing our content repurposing masterclass. And what I do for is um, we would sell for um, between 50. I've sold them as high as $300 for these workshops, masterclasses, whatever you want to call them. And for me, it's not about the price. It's about charging what they're going to commit to and show up and do the work. So um, for me, it's just to get people to see the teaching style and leave with the result. So 
I think, you know, charging anything too low, they might not be committed. Anything too high, you're going to scare people off. So now you're talking about time frame of teaching. It's what you feel comfortable about. I wouldn't worry about filling time. Like if I could teach something in five minutes, I'm going to teach it in five minutes. If I get the result in, in 15 minutes, I want to do that too. So I think it's about positioning, doing a welcome. Like we introduced you guys in this, this call today. Then we went right into the content. So you could probably do a presentation, go over your agenda, and then go through each bullet on that agenda. At the end, have a Q&A session, answer any questions. And then the last part of it, and especially if they paid to be there, I don't want to make it about a big pitch. But usually a masterclass or a workshop is to invite them into a bigger program, whether it's an a online course that you're, you're starting to build or you're going to build with them or a program of some sort of done for you service. You could say, Hey, you know, I'm Renee. I do this. I help people with their websites and funnels. If you would like me to help you with that, let's jump on a call. Um, you could schedule it here, drop a link and they could schedule a call with you. That's a very soft offer to invite them into something to go further. Most people, if they got a lot of value out of that masterclass are going to want to jump on a call with you to see if there's some kind of uh, working relationship that could happen or come out of it. So you could help them further. And um, I've used masterclasses, workshops, ch five-day challenges, three-day events. I've, all these things, consider I consider them a conversion event. So essentially, um, I've done these events for a couple of years now, and I've gotten to the million-dollar mark online without having a ton of sales calls. We have these types of events. I make I give as much value as I can, help them solve the first problem, and then invite them to a, um, an offer that will usually get them to the next result, right? And if they're only if they're on the fence and they decide not to buy, but I knew that they're on the fence, I would jump on a call with them. So instead of doing 50 calls a month, we're doing maybe five. So not that I haven't done any sales calls I have, but it's really just to answer any questions that they weren't clear on. So anyway, about 30 minutes to 45 minutes of the content that you want to deliver, give them some action steps, go through a Q&A, and then make a soft invitation. And again, you don't have to have something built. One of the first times I launched my uh, first big courses, I just did a, a paid training, low, low cost and low investment, but people got a lot of value out of it and said, who here would like to join me for six weeks and go a little bit deeper on these topics every single week with these experts that I've connected with and they're going to come teach you. And they were like, absolutely. You know, most of, we had 44 people say yes to that. So, um, and we didn't have it built. We just had a, a mapped out curriculum of what the next six weeks ahead look like and why that's even better than filming beforehand. Number one, because when you try to build a course that you think is what people want, it might end up being not what they want. But when you have a, a, a live curriculum going on, they could ask you questions. They could give you feedback. They could kind of guide the way the trainings are going. Just like this right here, you guys are asking questions. If I were to show up with questions I think you have and teach that, you guys would be like, this isn't really helpful. But because you're a part of it, I get to go specific on your questions. I think it makes a lot better experience. So Renee, any, any uh, clarifying questions on that before I go to your next question? No, that's perfect. I think it just, um, it boggles my mind because I'm such a systematic person. So mm -hmm. I think it's just a mindset thing that I need to shift that I don't need to have it all figured out. Um, in terms of, I have a problem in terms of over-delivering. So that's why I wanted that time frame because I have had many beta launches in the past and then friends or other coaches have said, you're giving away too much. <laughs> so that's why I need that time frame just to kind of like keep myself intact. So I'll keep to that then. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things I first hear is I don't know what to teach for free and what do I give away for paid? And in fact, it was on our first YouTube videos when we relaunched this channel to create. So if you want a link a card here to watch that video, it shows exactly what you should be doing in your free and the five things that you should include in every paid, or at least a few of the five things you should include in your paid offers that even if you gave away everything for free, people are still going to work with you in your paid products and services because of these five things. So check that out. But just to go a little bit into that, especially in a masterclass, I think that there's a, a tight balance of overwhelming in teaching versus showing them what you're doing, why you're doing it, and a couple of quick action steps to get them some quick wins. Because I noticed when I over deliver and teach too much, people are, their heads are spinning. And also you're not alone in the fact that launching something before it's built is super scary. My first time hearing that was from someone that was guiding me and said, Doug, like, I love what you're doing, but you're, you're going the wrong way. Don't do that. Just launch it. 
launch it in two weeks. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I did. And what I found was it became so much better of a product. And knowing myself back then, I'd probably still be building it. Like if I didn't have that pressure of people saying, yes, I bought it. And now I got to step up and deliver it. I'd probably still be making it perfect, right? You know, I say take imperfect action, put it out there. Your second question was about pricing. So here's how this works. This was a product that I sold for a thousand dollars for about a year and a half after I filmed it with that group. And here's how I did it. And as the pricing was, I said, you know what, if you join as one of the first 50 people, I'm going to uh, give you a discount. We're going to build it out live together. And here's what it looks like. And what I would do is uh, put them in a group chat. I gave them a Google form to fill out. I had asked like, what's your number one question on this topic and this topic. So they gave me feedback of how to guide them in the right way in these, in this paid program. And then um, I asked them what time works for you best, what day of the week, and then what time frame. I found a day that worked for everybody, or at least the best I could do. And we chose Wednesday in the afternoons. I forget the exact time. It was a couple of years ago now. And we met every week for six weeks. I take that live Zoom session, just like we're on Zoom right now. And I would take the, the training portion of it and I would chop it up into a couple of lessons. And I'd position my slides where it's like, hey, here's our first lesson and here's the, the uh, action step. And I would do like three to five of those in an hour. And then I'd have a Q&A session. I would trim the Q&A session using a video editing tool off of that live Zoom session when take the recording. And now I had like three to five lessons and a Q&A session. And that became module one in my course. Just take the recordings. And I did that for six weeks. So by the end of it, I had six modules with about um, 25 to 30 lessons in the Q&A sessions for each module, which gave people a really cool experience. And they could even submit future questions. Um, what we did when we launched the, launched it after the six week, we relaunched it at the 997 price point, And we sold it for a year and a half using a five-day challenge. We do a five-day challenge, invite them into that course. And we just had a weekly support call and they could come and get feedback. So that product is no longer um, something I sell. It, it had its run, but I, I know it's still good, but I know times change, marketing changes. I don't want to be someone selling a product that's outdated. So we have made a version, a new version of it called our full-time freedom Academy. So um, that's kind of our evolution. And I hope that's helpful to you, Renee, about pricing and how to deliver it. And the best part is the people that did become founding members they not only got a discount, but we actually made them partners where if they made referrals to that course in the future, they would get a, a commission on that. So we got a ton of people referring our courses over that year and a half. And um, all I did was ask them for a testimonial uh, in their last few weeks as they got results. So like, you know, I'm gonna give you a discount as long as you'd be open to give me a testimonial if you get the results, which a lot of them did. So we got a lot of cool testimonials. So when we relaunched it, there's a lot more social proof in there to get um, different content pieces made to that, right? So next part of your question, Renee, is should we build up our ideal audience first in the group with just a free offer or launch your value and ascension offer at the same time? Yes, I would focus on audience growth. And then your second question is how big should our group be before you launch your next offer? So here's what I did. It took me 30 days. I got to about two, and this was the, I don't know, wild, wild west of Facebook group days. It's, it's still very effective, but things aren't as I say easy, but it's still as simple. You just have to do things different. The reason why people say Facebook groups are dead is because they're modeling every other group. And I say, what can you do that's different that makes you stand out? And try to give something of such good value that you're giving it, they'd be willing to pay for it. But when they join your group, you give away for free. So for instance, we have five different free courses, depending on what topic they need most help with. Some people need help with content. Some people need help with attracting leads. Some people need help with sales. And, and we didn't just build all that. That took time. But what is one course, one training that you can create that is most likely the beginning problem that your audience is facing? So start with just one freebie. And when they join your group, have that conversation and say, hey, I've created this thing that we sell, but I'm willing to give it to our group members for free. Is it cool if I send that over to you? And you could automate that with email and um, some other tools that automatically message them when they join your group, which is really cool. Um, so I would grow up that group. And as people love your resource, they're probably gonna invite friends. You could host a contest. There's a lot of cool things you could do. And if you position your Facebook group correctly, name it the right way, you'll find it coming up in suggested Facebook groups and you'll see people joining um, from just looking at your title and your, your group cover photo. 
So um, I would start by giving value at least for 30 days. I know it's like people want to just come in and make the offer and start selling, but by talking to your group members and jumping on quick little five, 10 minute calls with them and having conversations in messenger, you're going to be able to understand more about their needs and desires and obstacles and craft something that's going to really solve that for them. And um, if you're not sure what to offer, the best way to find out what that is, if you if you've congregated these people is to have conversations with them. It's the best thing. Like, everything I create is from having conversations with all of you and finding out where you're getting stuck, taking your questions, giving me ideas for future videos, all that. So I really appreciate all of you guys sharing that. I know it's not easy to say, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm stuck with, but it allows you to get more clear on your direction. And hopefully I could give you some good value by teaching you like what I would do and, and what to do now. So um, hopefully that's helpful. Focus on audience growth and having the conversations. I know it's a lot of work, but I promise you, if you do the work now, it's going to get so much easier in the future for what you're doing. It's not going to be as tedious. And how big should your group be? You're, I would say 100 people. I don't know. Try to get to like 100 is a good milestone. 300 is a great milestone to do a challenge or a, a masterclass or some kind of live event. And... That's a really good number, 100 to 300 people. It might sound like a ton, but if you're out there creating content, creating these shorts, reels that you could repurpose on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube shorts, you create one video a week and you just uh, film it and share it in five places, you're going to start getting a lot of traffic to your community. And I would just link your community and all of your, your profiles. And um, as you get them into the community, set up an email automation to send them that free course. People are going to love your content. Some people might, might not love your content. That's okay. You want to repel certain people, but the people that love it are going to want to take you up on that masterclass or that challenge when you launch it um, after serving them and you know, providing the value in that marketplace. Any questions on that, Renee? No, that was perfect. Thank you. Okay. Really clarified a lot of things. Um, I think what I appreciate the most of you is you're one of the few guys out there who's actually documented your journey and that's what I've been wanting to see from day one, because we all see these people when they've already had their, <clears throat> excuse me, their first comma or their second comma or whatever. Mm -hmm. But those of us who are kind of, I mean, for me, I, I've changed niches. So it is very overwhelming already and scary to pivot into a new direction and then not having someone to model after. So thank you so much for being vulnerable with us when you started so that we don't have to have that headache you had to go through so that we can actually know which direction to go in. Yeah, I really appreciate that feedback. And um, I look at, like, I just spent the other day looking at, you guys know Mr. Beast on YouTube. He's like one of the, he's about to hit 100 million subscribers. This guy's massive. I just was curious. I went back to his beginning, beginning videos. And it was so cool to see, like most, you've heard of people going back and deleting their beginning videos. I'm so grateful he didn't because it's so inspiring to see where he started and in only seven years. I know it sounds like a long time. He went from you know being a high school kid doing gaming and just sharing random thoughts to now having the, one of the top successful YouTube channels. And I think people forget that they don't need to pretend, fake it till they make it. Just be who you are, do the action steps, and you'll become who you need to be and have everything that you have desired. You just got to put in the time. The only difference between him and everyone else is like giving it time. Don't quit too soon. Um, and if you guys look at my Facebook group, that could help you. And I suggest if you have a Facebook group doing the same. And this isn't necessarily for just everyone in my group. People probably, I'm sure some people get a lot of value out of this. Um, but this is for me. Like this is the document, my journey, even to this day. So if you go back to guide six in my free group, you could see my first ever post about um, my first 500 members. And hopefully this loads here in a moment, but I go through all the way from then till now. And you can see some of the biggest milestones in my business and see how I, I did my first event, my first speaking gig, my first everything. So if it's helpful to you, I would go through these posts and just kind of look back when I quit my job, right? In the restaurant, that was awesome. Took this thing full time. Look how different everything is. It's just crazy to see that, see this. Um, first speaking gig, first time I launched my coaching program, first time I met uh, Russell Brunson and Steve Larson. Um, when I was my first leaderboard, going out to click, you guys get the point. So yeah, document the journey. I think it's more inspiring than anything else for people to see and for yourself to look back on, see how far you've come. So thank you for sharing, Renee. I appreciate that. Thanks for the kind words. 
All right. Next question is Mark. Mark says, or I'm sorry, um, Mark's next. How can I decide what to do and concentrate on one thing when I have so many things to do? Absolutely. What a good question. I think people's biggest misconception about time is that they have to do everything alone. And in fact, I bet you most of the things you're doing in your business or your life in general, life in business, it's not your business that's taking up the most time. It's probably your day to day, right? How many times are you stopping to cook, right? Hopefully three times a day, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and at least right, eating and nourishing your body, you're probably taking three breaks a day. You're probably having to clean three times a day, if not more, you probably have to run errands. You have to do all these things. And I know it's tough to think about, but if it, and even in your business, like you're stopping between all these tasks. And I think the best thing I've started doing is batching. So like, for example, now I have meal prep that gets delivered. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but I know that me taking the time to stop cook, uh, stop what I'm doing every day to go cook a meal, then clean the meal. Now I go and heat these meals up, take me three minutes. I'm back to work like five minutes. I could eat while I'm working. Um, and if I'm not able to do meal delivery, can I, you know, prep all my food on Sunday? Even if you're not like a gym rat and like trying to get jacked, right. You should prep your meals, make it easier for yourself to have a quick meal. Um, do all your shopping one day a week, stop going to the grocery store every day. Stop doing all these things that you're, you're, you're doing that's taking a lot of your time away, distracting you, and you're switching between tasks. Um, one of the best things I do is hire a cleaner. And that sounds bougie as heck saying that out loud, but like it's not that expensive. It's such a relief to know that my house is going to be cleaned on a biweekly basis. And I, I tidy up here and there. I'm not a mess maker, but you know things get unorganized. They come do a deep clean every uh, twice a month. Super helpful. I don't have to waste a whole day cleaning my apartment, my house, you know, and, and yard work, all those things. Like think about the money you could make in your business. And if you just focused more on that. So when it comes to time, make a list. Um, I'm doing this currently in my business because before you could delegate and outsource, you have to understand what you're doing. And I guarantee you at least half of the things on your to-do list could probably go away, be automated or prioritized. And knowing like myself, reason I'm doing this is because I'll have my to-do list built out and I'll go to the thing on the bottom, the lowest priority thing to distract myself when really now I had prioritized. I have these three top things that must be done today. So let's start there. And like having that to-do list, looking at it and assess your time audit for the week and really find out where are you wasting time? Do you really want to be successful online and you're spending a few hours a day watching TV and you can't cut that out? Maybe this isn't what you want to do. You know, you got to put a little sacrifice into it to make time to prioritize what's important. So for me, what's really helped me is write down everything I'm doing and then look back and say, I could probably get rid of that. Um, this isn't, this is very low importance. Like I could probably do without that, or this could be automated. I could start you know, automating my emails to go out here. And what this is going to do for you, if you're using a project management tool, um, there's Asana, Monday, Trello, there's all kinds of things. We use Airtable. Airtable, I have all my tasks in there and I'm prioritizing it. And what I'm doing now is like, let's say I want to hire a community manager. I could take all those tasks, click on them and say, you know, um, hey, uh, Jay, I'd like you to start taking over these tasks. Here's what it looks like. Here's a priority. And here's a little video description. Uh, I make a quick Loom video, loom.com. You could film your screen and put a little link there. They could watch to learn that process. And the best thing I did for my business was hire somebody because I think we're more willing to show up and do the work for somebody else than we are ourselves. So imagine if you had to make sure that you got to show up and do what you're supposed to do every day to keep that person paid and feed, putting food on the table for their family, you're going to work really hard, not only for yourself, but for that person. And, you know, we, we started with one hire three years ago, my brother, Jeremy, who's here with us today behind stage. And then I brought on a community manager and then I brought on the next person I needed help with. Then I brought on coaches to help me fulfill our, with our clients. And to now to this day, we have 10 people total, right? Nine, including my, or nine besides me, 10, including myself. And I, you told me that three years ago, I would not imagine that, but it started with time audit and looking at everything I'm doing in my day, find out what can I get rid of? Because why would I give a task to someone that's not bringing any results? And make them feel like they're doing more and really tie every task you're doing to an outcome. So if you say, I want to make $10,000 this month, and here's the plan, here's the task we need to do. And one of those tasks does not 
plan up to help you get that outcome, why are you doing it? Get rid of it. So I know I ranted a little bit there. I hope it helps you be a little bit more clear on like if time's your issue, it's typically about what are you hiding from? You're, you're, and I, I even to, to this day, like what's my big resistance factor to scaling? And I'm going to make up harder things in my mind to prevent me from doing that because it's uncomfortable. But when I get real with myself and say, what am I hiding from? It's not time's issue. Like I know what I need to prioritize. It's something deeper. So what can you actually address and face to break through that resistance to focus on your priorities? All right. I hope that's, and whoever, I'm not sure who asked that journey, um, but if you guys have any questions further on that, it's a great topic. We're going to be creating more content on my YouTube channel and my shorts about that exact thing, because I think it's the most important first step for somebody is addressing your finances auditing them, sit down with it, go through your reports. And then second thing is your time, audit your time, audit your money, say, this is where I want to go. And here's what I need to do to get there. And I think that's the best thing anyone could do starting out. Great stuff. All right. Mark says, uh, really liked hearing the details of your last answer. Uh, that answers to my question. Awesome. Glad Mark. Den, Den in the house. What's up, Den? Den says, really cool strategy. How do you contact with other experts to come up to teach your students? Great question. I just put it out there. So um, I really got to know what they do, identified them as being one of the best at what they do. I watched a ton of their content. I might even went and bought a couple of their, their free, uh, I'm sorry, their, their low entry courses, you know, small investment to go through it, get their attention. And then I would start liking and commenting on their posts every day. I would do that for about a week. So like when I reach out to them, it's not the first time they've heard of me. They saw that I became um, a customer of theirs. I bought one of their things. I was showing up to their community and giving value. I was asking questions. And that was my first step. Second step was like, hey, I got a quick question. Just want to reach out. Um, here's what I'm doing. I'd love to make you a part of it. Would you have time to connect for like 10 minutes and find out what time would work for them? I would connect with them on a Zoom call and just be honest with them. Like I am brand new. I'm super impressed with what you do. Here's what I do. Here's how I think I could, you know, fit you into that. And I think as I grow this in the future, right, I had very little audience at the time, but I said, I'm going to grow this thing. Here's my plan. Here's my vision. And I'm not the funnel expert. I'm not the e-commerce expert. I'm not the, um, you know, uh, course creation expert back then. I, I didn't know anything about those things. So I said, I want to send traffic to you and your products over time. Is that something you'd be willing to do? And, and mo all of them said, Absolutely. And they said, I'll even make you an affiliate where I'll give you a 40 or 50% commission of my course sales. We'll get, we'll get you set up with my affiliate manager and they'll get you in the link. And then we'll schedule a time to do that training for your people. Let's do it. So I think by showing up and contributing to their communities and being a customer of theirs earned my way into them. And that's really how you get the attention of anyone who's kind of a few steps or chapters ahead of you. You know, if any of my clients came up to me and said, Doug, can you help me uh, launch a, a training in my course to my people? Can you help come and help me with my five-day challenge? Like it's always a yes, right? They've got my attention. They're taking the action. We reward action takers, right? So that's, that's the mission. Great question, Dan. All right, let's see. We got a few more questions and we got to wrap. I know we're a little over. We're about to be over. So thank you for being here, everyone. Again, if you have questions that we have not addressed, drop them below in this stream, drop them below in the replay. Uh, if you want to come join the Kickstart Your Business training, and if you're watching this on YouTube, link is below. We have two of these every month. You can join us on Zoom. You can also come and get our five trainings and our five action steps to join our community. We'd love to have you. All right. So next question. Um, what is a good way to document the journey when you are starting out, no connection, zero results, and just trying to teach people how to deal with overwhelm, simplify, and get the big picture and get a better understanding of the tools and automations, which I don't, which I do understand. Would YouTube how-to videos that really go in depth help with specific keyword-driven issues that are the fastest way to get traction? Or would you go to TikTok or YouTube Shorts or whatever it might be? So that's a great question. Um, I was told by a mentor of mine that you should focus on one platform, one message, one offer until you get to your first big goal, whatever it's $100,000 or a million dollars. And if you guys look and you watch this on YouTube, I've grown a seven-figure business in a Facebook community. And that's why I'm, I've, I stopped doing YouTube because I felt like I was being pulled in so many different directions. Realistically, I think I could have handled it by 
I, I do live sessions in my free community every week. So realistically, I probably could have taken that same thing and then put it on YouTube um, or turn it into shorts with a one person team, right? Hire one person that works part-time to help you take that video, trim it into shorts. And as long as it's not you focusing on all the platforms, like I think that's okay to have help. But if it's just you focus on one platform, my platform of choice really is a Facebook community because it grows for you. It attracts the right people. It gets them on your email list and it's, it creates a safe container for them to come and share and, and, and um, ask questions and things like that. Now, why am I on YouTube? I think YouTube is the best platform, honestly. Like, I think about all the content I've created in my community and how it's kind of just lost in the Facebook algorithm. It served me very well, but I know that there's videos I made two years ago with keywords on how to do certain things, Mark, and they've brought me hundreds of thousands of views, some of them, and people buying my offers and joining my community. So it's the only platform where I created content once and it serves me for years later. So that's why I'm back to YouTube. I'm, I, I've got really cool plans for YouTube. So I would recommend that. And if you have someone that you know that could take that one video a week and create, maybe you said some, maybe on this live stream right here, I said a couple gold nuggets in 30 second to minute span. We could, we could trim out like right here and make it a little short, put it on YouTube, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, TikToks, uh, YouTube shorts, kind of like that style. But um, I think it's most important to focus. And if it's taking up a lot of time, try to just focus on the one platform that you feel most comfortable on and grow into that. I think it could be YouTube. Um, everyone has their own preference, but um, see what you could do just to focus on one and then maybe hire one person to help you repurpose. That's, that'd be my best advice to you, Mark. But yeah, keyword, by the way, um, search. Um, is like 18% of most video views on YouTube come from search. So most of it is going to come from suggested, uh, so like videos that are suggested to people that are likely to watch it or um, the other, and I'm not a YouTube expert by any means, I'm learning as I go, but I found out that you should do a good balance of just not only how to tutorials, but just sessions where you go and be your authentic self and, and teach a little bit of what you know or you know, ask questions, uh, answer questions like this would be a good segment. So we're gonna be putting this on YouTube. I'm, I'm curious to see how it does, but I think it, a lot of people starting out to kickstart their business have similar questions than all of you have. So thank you for sharing. Appreciate you guys being here. All right, Dan says, I think repurposing all that would take a team, right? Focus on creating content on Facebook and it's, it's crazy the time it takes. It is a lot of time. I started doing my own video edits and every, I found that pretty much every minute is an hour of editing. So if you have a minute short, it's going to take you about an hour to edit minimum. If you have a five minute YouTube video, it's about five hours of editing. Unless if you get someone really good at it, I'm not an expert in video editing, but I think that, um, for us, like I just want to make simple videos that have great content, do my best to answer the questions I see you guys having and uploading that very little edits. Like this stream right here has no edits. We have an uh, intro on it and an outro, and that's pretty much it. So it will take us about 10 minutes to edit this video. Probably we might trim some of the buffers out, but we'll see. All right, everybody. Um, I don't see any other questions. Let me check the chat here. Don't be shy to ask questions. It helps me create better content for all of you. And it's likely that I've probably been where you are right now. And if I haven't been, then I could find and in the right direction of how to ask yourself the right questions and guide you that way, or find someone I could put you in touch with to answer your questions correctly, right? So uh, Renee, Den, David, Jeremy, whoever is still here on the Zoom session with us, thank you for being here. I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Some of you I'll see you sooner, but um, we'll do our next Q&A session in a couple of weeks. All right, you guys have a fantastic day. Peace and love, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. All right, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments below. I hope that gave you some really good ideas. And now if you want to experience how we do this for yourself, consider this your formal invitation to come join our content creators community today, linked in the description below this video. I'd love to have you as a part of our community. Okay, that's all I've got for you in this video. If you've got any value from this, be sure to hit that like button, become a subscriber so you don't miss any of our future videos that will help you more on this topic. You can also check out these two videos on a similar topic right here. I'll see you on the next one.